and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today we are making this cardigan. I have called it the marble cardigan because I am using James C. Brett Marble Chunky. But oh my goodness, how I love this cardigan. I have been wearing it non-stop since I made it and it is so warm. It's just fantastic. For my cardigan in a medium size, I used four balls of James C. Brett Marble Chunky. This yarn is 100% acrylic, it's machine washable and it is a chunky. I am using MC74 and I thought the colour was really, really lovely. And yes, that's of course why also I went to the woods to do this lookbook. These balls are 200 grams, so four balls will give you 800 grams and my cardigan was just about 700 grams. So that gives you some leeway as well. We have this yarn on our website, so do go and have a look. There's a link in the description box. I also have a written pattern available for this cardigan. So again, you will find a link to the pattern on our website in the description box. So to get started on making this cardigan, you are going to need to make two identical hexagons. So I'm going to show you how to make a hexagon. So this is my first one. I'm now starting my second one. And then of course I will show you how to lengthen the arms, connect both the hexagons together and then lengthen the cardigan and do the ribbing. So here we go. So let's get started with a slip knot. Insert your hook. I'm using the six as is prescribed by the yarn. So because this is a variegated thicker yarn, we will be uh, growing our hexagon quite quickly. Okay, so we're going to get started by chaining six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you go back to the first chain you did, insert your hook, loop back the working yarn, bring it through the stitch and through the loop on your hook. You now have a circle, and this is a circle that we are going to be using to place our first clusters in. This is the end and I'm going to try and take it along. So then for round two I'm going to do two chains and this counts as a double crochet. So to make clusters we are going to make groups of three double crochet. So this is our first double crochet. So now for creating our first cluster we do two more double crochets and I use American terminology. There we go. Then you do two chains. And now we are going to repeat three double crochets, two chains until we have six clusters. So we start again with doing our double crochets into the circle. So you yarn over, you insert, you pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's our next cluster done. One, two chains for the corner and back into the circle for another three double crochets. One, two chains and another three double crochets. So I now have three clusters done. As you can see, now we're doing our fourth cluster. And you will notice you have less and less space to work in, in this circle here, but that's okay, just scoot things along. And of course a hexagon has six sides, so we need to make sure we have six clusters. So one, two, three, four, five, one more, two chains, scoot things about and we do another three double crochets two chains and then here we are going to skip the two chains here we have a V that's on top of that 
double crochet there we go under that and we do a slip stitch so now we have one two three four five six clusters and if we pull the end we can make the hole a little bit smaller but we'll worry about that later on because we can deal with that later on so for round three we are going to slip stitch to the next chain space it's always easier just to make a few slip stitches to get you to the better location to start your next round into this chain space we are going to work two chains counts as a double crochet so then we add two more double crochets to that for that first cluster then we do two chains and then in the same chain space we are going to place three double crochets so a normal cluster and then you move over to the next chain space in there you're going to do three double crochets two chains and three double crochets and if you haven't got enough space just scoot things about a bit so you can still fit those stitches in there there we go so you're going to continue now with doing the same thing three double crochets two chains three double crochets in each of these chain spaces and of course we're doing six lots of these in total so i have made it all the way around i now have 12 clusters and now i'm going to close the round skipping those two first chains going under the third v there or the first proper v and doing a slip stitch i'm now going to do a slip stitch to the better location and start my next round so now we are at the stage where we are doing corners in the corners but also we are doing sides as well okay so once again start with two chains two double crochets two chains and another lot of three double crochets into that same chain space, completing the corner. Okay, so that's our first corner done. And then to get to the next corner, we are going to place a cluster of three double crochets in between the two clusters of the row below. there we go and then in the corner we're going to do a corner again of three double crochets two chains and three double crochets and this is how you are going to repeat all along this round so you will be doing 18 clusters all around I will see you at the end of the round so I have now made it all the way around. I've done 18 clusters and I'm skipping these two chains going under the next V and closing the round. Now I just want to show you that yes, I can still press it down and it will lie flat, but normally it doesn't. So a hexagon does not lie flat and that's the whole point of it because the way we are going to fold it will allow us to use this as the underarm area and this is going to be seamed up and that's going to be our sleeve and this will become our back and our front so of course at the moment this is far too small because this would fit Ophelia right but for yourself you're going to make this as big as you need it to be so for my cardigan I have done 14 rounds so that means there are 14 clusters on each side. So now you are going to keep going 
by doing round five and round five is basically the same as we have been doing so you do your two slip stitches you get yourself to that location to get started in a corner you do a corner and then here you're going to have to do two clusters before you get to the next corner and every round you will be doing more and more clusters so now I'm going to continue working on my second hexagon here making it of course as large as my first one so 14 rounds this will make my hexagon when held together for a sleeve wider than the sleeve that I need but not wide enough so it covers the whole of my back So I kept on going with doing my rounds. I now have done 14 rounds, which means I have 14 clusters on each side of my hexagon. And now is the time, for me this is big enough, so now is the time to start lengthening for my sleeve. Now I have 14 clusters, so you need an even amount of clusters. Okay, so if you haven't got an even amount, make it either bigger I wouldn't make it much smaller but make you know do an extra round so you have an even round so to start with we're going to get ourselves to the corner chain space because that's the better location to get started okay then you're going to need a stitch marker and we're going to mark the middle of our side here so we've got one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven clusters so in between here this is the middle there we go okay and now we're going to start doing rows so no longer in rounds we're just going to work on one side to lengthen it to make a sleeve so insert your hook and we're going to get started by chaining two one two then we turn because the chain two counts as a double crochet but it is also our turning chain and then we're going to add a double crochet into there so we are now going to treat this as if we were doing a granny cluster row and I always start with two double crochets and then end in one and that's my split cluster that I always do now we are going to do clusters as usual in between the clusters so three double crochets in between the next two clusters there we go voila and we are going to work all the way until we meet the stitch marker. So I have now done the clusters and the next location would be where my stitch marker is. So in this location, so move the stitch marker out, I'm going to do a cluster of two double crochets. Okay, and I am going to replace my stitch marker. There we go, into that cluster. Voila. And then I'm going to continue with doing my three double crochet clusters until the end of the row, and that's where I will meet you. So I've made it to the end of the row here, and this is where I am just going to do a double crochet. Then we do a chain two, we turn, so this is row two that we are now doing. So the decrease that we are going to do is going to happen over three rows. So this was the first row. Now we do row two, so we start the same way, chain two and a double crochet into that chain space here and now we work our way until we reach here so I'll meet you when you get here so I am now in the location before 
the cluster with the stitch marker. We are not going to place a cluster here nor here, but we are going to place a cluster in between these two double crochets. So remove the stitch marker to start with. Then do your double crochet in between those two double crochets and this way you will get a nice reduction in your clusters and you won't even notice it. Now we have to replace the stitch marker so we know where our middle is. There we go. And you continue by doing a cluster not in the next chain space here but here. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And you work your way all the way to the end of the row. So when I get to the end of the row, I do a cluster in that last location here. And then one double crochet on top of that chain or in between there, wherever you can fit it in. So now over the course of two rows, we have reduced one cluster. So now for row three, we are just going to do clusters in this row, but we still have to move our stitch marker. So don't remove it because we will need it for another set of decreases. Then for the next row, we're going to chain two and turn. Then I'm going to put a double crochet right there at the beginning. Then we do our clusters all along the row until, of course, we meet the stitch markers. So here I'm just going to remove the stitch marker from the cluster and I am going to put it in between the two clusters of my current row, which is exactly what we did to start with, indicate the middle of our row. And now I'm going to complete my row. So I've now done three rows of lengthening my sleeve and in doing so I have reduced by one cluster. So now this is what you're going to keep on repeating. So do those three rows. So we've got the middle here. This is where we're doing two double crochets. Then the next one we're skipping and then the next one we're completely skipping and we're just doing the double crochet clusters. So you do this as often as you need to, to make sure you have achieved at the end the desired width of your sleeve. Now I do recommend doing this together. So you make your two hexagons and then once you've done this on one hexagon, you go over to the next hexagon and you do it there as well. Okay, so work up those sleeves at the same time. So on this side here, on this hexagon here, I have now done, I think, four um, lots of decreasing. So I have lost four clusters all in all. So I'm hoping that this will be long enough, but when I get to the same stage on this hexagon, I shall be clipping it all together with my crocodile clips and trying on my sleeves to see if they are long enough. So I will meet you now when you have got to this stage here. So this hexagon is now ready to be tried on. So this is the front, this is under the arms, this is the sleeve, this is the back. And here I have my tapered sleeve. So I will see you when you have two hexagons that are in this same state. So now that I have both my hexagons in this location, I think I've reduced my sleeve enough. So I'm going to do a couple of rows where I'm just doing my clusters and where I'm not reducing. So I'm going to lengthen my sleeves slightly. Do pay attention because we are going to make a ribbing. So that will 
add on a little bit of length as well. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine full clusters and I made sure I had nine on the other side as well. So I know I've done the same thing. So now we are going to take our hexagon and this longer part you're going to put that together like so and then you pull it so that this continues on and then here you will get the rest of it lying flat. So this now is the front, this is under your arms and this is your sleeve. So this is going to be our top, our shoulder line where we will have to join. Now, I want to join, but I don't want a join on the outside. So I'm going to take this part and put it against the other part, but the other way around. And of course, here we will have to adjust that as well. So these two long lengths here are now together. They're wrong side on the outside, good side on the inside. So we are going to get started here. So what I've been doing is just um, tying two bits of yarn together and now I just keep crocheting. I leave these ends hanging out and I will sew those in later. So insert your hook and we're going to get started on this part here. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult to join up because we don't have the V's. Once you get here you have these corner chain spaces of your hexagon so this will be easier to start joining the V's on the outer V single crochet so that's what I'm going to join here but of course until we get there we're just going to have to do our best uh, we'll just make sure that it looks nice and that we have you know nice intervals between our stitches so let's get started with a chain then you hold your two pieces together. I'm going to go into here, corner chain space, and then here as well, find the corner most location, and we're going to do a single crochet, just to get started, really. Then a chain, then I'm going to advance a little bit, and just try and find maybe a stitch that you can go into. If you can pick up two strands, do that sometimes so chain one in between sometimes yeah i have to go completely around the stitch so just find you know sensible locations really and here i have that knot so i'm just going to hold this end out of the way try and get into here maybe and then on the opposite side as well find a location to go into and try and tally up the rows so you can make it to here and everything tallies up. Okay, so I managed to do this little bit here. I am now on the corner of those hexagons and then it gets easier. So I'm going to do a single crochet into that chain space. And then from here on, I can pick up loops. I can pick up Vs. So depending on how you want it to look. I'm going to pick up the outer one and the outer one here um, of this one. This is the one I think I need. So just have a good look, see which one it is and then do your single crochet. So the outer one, where is the second one here? Where is the corresponding one here? Is it? Yeah, it should be. There we go. That seems a bit much that I'm picking up but yeah you need to just assess each time what you're picking up let me have a look what it looks like so this will look like this so we have a ridge here and then the strands there and of course here um, we've done what we can and we're just going to have those strands going sideways there so I'm going to continue like this until I get to the end and that means we have made the sleeves and the shoulders and then we're going to connect the two parts together. 
I have now made it all the way to the end here. I'm going to cut off the yarn. I did a last single crochet in that chain space there. Back. So this is what it looks like. I like the uh, look of that. So we're now going to put them inside out again. So good sides on the outside. This one is like that already as well. So this is one side. This is the other side. There we go. So let me just try and put this up so you can see. So here we've got the sleeve. We've got the front. We've got the back. We have the sleeve, the front and the back. So what we now have to do is connect the back. So obviously when this is connected like this, for me, this isn't wide enough. So I'm going to have to uh, make some amendments. So now I'm going to have to add to the back to fill this gap. So I'm going to do a couple of rows on one side, then a couple of rows on the other, clip them together, try it on and so on until I have the width that I need. So really we are doing row threes. Um, so we're going to get started with a slip knot, get your back here. This is the corner chain space. You yarn over and I'm going to act as if I was already crocheting. So I'm doing a standing stitch. Then I'm doing a second one and then I'm going to be doing clusters all along to the join. So I've put a cluster in that chain space here and then I will just put a double crochet onto the join there. So this is how I'm now going to continue every row. So starting up with a chain two, you turn and you do a second double crochet in there and then you start doing your clusters. So I have now done six extra rows on this panel and five extra rows on this panel. So both on the back parts, these are the fronts here. And now I'm going to do the sixth row on this panel, but I am going to use that to link into that last row of the other panel. So I will show you how to do that. Now I have tried it on. I've clipped it together using these kinds of crocodile clips. I've tried it on and this is the width. I have to say I did do three, wasn't enough, did five, you know, so then it was nearly enough. So I, I just added to um, make it so that there's six here and now there'll be six here when I have joined them. So that's a good way to just take your time here to do this in stages and try it on each time. So there we go. So I'm going to do my chain two here. I'm going to turn and having done that chain two, I'm now going to go over to the other panel and just do a link into the, um, you know, sort of the corner most location, just so that it is linked at the top of that chain two. So let me have a look. Can I pick up a V anywhere you can get into that seems sensible is fine. So I've done my little chain here. Then you start doing your double crochets as usual, but I've had to cut my yarn here. So I'm just going to hold those ends out of the way. There we go. So they're now just hanging there. I will sew them in later. And once again, I am going to go over yeah, to the other side and just do a link slip stitch just so that the top here is a bit more reinforced and a bit stronger because that's where you will be pulling um, as you wear your cardigan. So now we are going to start doing our clusters. So you do the clusters on the 
side where you're doing your sixth row then each time you've done your cluster you go in between the clusters on the other panel and you link them and then you work your cluster again on your current hexagon and then link it to the next one there we go and this is what it looks like so i will meet you at the end and then we will lengthen our cardigan So I've just made it to the end of the row, done my last cluster here, have to link it in between there. So that's what I am going to do. This end is getting in the way. But as you know, um, you know, when I design something like this, I always leave my ends out because I'm more than likely to have to change things about and to redo things. And of course, I do that so you don't have to. So that's why you will see a lot of ends um, in my projects because I might have to undo them again, you know. So here we go. So I've done that last double crochet there in that last stitch. Make sure you also link this to the other panel. I forgot to do that. And this is where I am going to cut this off. So there we go. So this is the cardigan. So basically it is a cardigan, but we can improve on this. So I'm going to try and make it longer. This is not long enough for me. It's quite short. I want a longer cardigan. So that's what I'm going to do in a moment. And Okay, so starting with a slip knot, insert your hook, and we're going to get started on a corner here, and we will be treating the edge, the lower edge, as a straight line, and we're just going to do rows up and down of clusters. So I'm going to get started by doing a standing double crochet into that corner chain space there we go and to get started we do a second one so it's the same as before it's that row three essentially and now we are going to do a cluster in between every cluster and of course that bit in the middle where we have done the extra rows for our back we just need to try and sort out where we are going to place our clusters at a regular interval and it's only in this row that you'll have to do that so make sure you place them sensibly not too many not too few and then continue on so here I've just done the clusters in the locations of those rows that we did to close up the gap in our back and here I found the uh, locations with just a single crochet were perfect and then here I had to skip this one of course so here I was going around the double crochet where I had the two double crochets but then of course here it meant that I couldn't use this corner chain space but I've just skipped it and then went to the next chain space and I think this is fine to do it's okay there's not um, you know too little here it's fine so there we go so placing two here would have been of course too much so this is what it looks like I will see you at the end of the row So here I've done my last cluster in between my two clusters here. Then we have the corner here and I'm just going to do a double crochet either in the corner chain space or trying to get it into that chain of the corner chain space really at the corner here. Okay, there we go. Right. So now we are doing the same thing again. Chain two, turn. You do your double crochet in this location and then your clusters. So you're going to do this row until you think your cardigan is long enough. Of course, we are going to do a ribbing around it and I am planning on doing it around um, the base as well. So that will mean there'll be an extra depth, an extra length 
um, and of course depending on how wide you want to make your ribbon that's going to be added to that so take that into account but for now I'm going to do quite a few rows because I want this to be a reasonably long cardigan so I will see you when I have finished lengthening my cardigan Okay, so I have now done 13 extra rows here to make the cardigan longer and I have tried it on and I like it so that's good. So I have not cut off my yarn because from here we are going to get started with our ribbing. So we're going to get started here, go all the way around and then also do the front as well. So I'm going to get started by doing eight chains one two three four five six seven and eight now my ribbing is going to be seven stitches but i need a chain for my turning so in the seventh chain so using the eighth one as my turning chain you're going to yarn over you pick up the back loop only and you're going to do a half double crochet and then you're going to continue on your chain doing half double crochets and of course you should be doing seven of them if you find it easier you could mark this one here as your last stitch because you will need that when you get back there of course so here here I have now done, let's have a look, one, two, three, four, five, and this is my chain, so I've done five stitches. I need to do two more, so let's do that first of all. There we go. And now we need to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So you're going to work along the base of your cardigan and we're going to use our V's. So this is the V that we're working from, this is the V that we are skipping, and this is the V that we are going to go into. There we go. And this is the first bit of our ribbing done. So now we're going to do a turning chain, but of course then it wouldn't be connected. So instead of doing a turning chain, we are going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch. I mean, it's the same as a chain, we're just connecting it into our cardigan then you turn and then you're going to work your seven half double crochets on top of your ribbing here so yarn over make sure you do your seven so don't start working in this one because these two here are the slip stitches that we did so this one is the first one so into that one back loop only pull up a loop and do your half double crochet and this is again how you will be doing seven half double crochet so all along your ribbing but for the last one you are going to use your two strands because that will make for a nicer look so let me just do six half double crochets in the back loop only there we go one two three four five six so that's that and then the seventh one i'm going to do by yarning over and i'm going to pick up both these strands here because then if we were to pick up one strand look i'm making a hole can you see that and that's not going to be very nice at the edge of our cardigan so now of course yeah there we go so i've picked up both and I'm just going to do that last one in both and this doesn't make a hole and it makes a nice edge. So chain one, turn, disregard the chain and start doing your back loop only half double crochets all the way to the edge of the cardigan. So I've done my seven half double crochets, skipping this one that we're using, this one to skip, going into the next one doing my slip stitch and another slip stitch into the next one and you continue doing your ribbing. So you will be turning your work all the time, missing out these two, starting with 
that first one there and it will be a lengthy process but I really enjoy doing this. So we're doing little rows of seven back loop only half double crochet apart from of course that last one where we pick up the two V's and make sure you keep counting to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven. There we go. And so this is how you are going to continue. Let me show you. All along the base of your cardigan. And I will meet you when you get here. Don't cut off your yarn because we will continue from there on. Okay, so I have made it all around the base of my cardigan and here I just wanted to show you that you need to end here. You need to end at your very lowest corner here. So here I had to do one little adjustment where I didn't skip a stitch when I slip stitched to attach my row kind of thing. Um, so if I hadn't done that I would have finished here and that's not the point you need to finish there so a couple of rows before the end just try and work out where you would end whether it's here or there and if it's there that's fine if it's here then you'll just have to do a little fudge here of not skipping that stitch when you connect but then uh, continuing on and then I finish there so that worked out really well so then you're just going to continue on again. So we've now done the base. Now we need to go up and we are going to do the same thing. We are going to get started with a chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You turn, you skip the first chain and you start doing I just needed to check you start doing your back loop half double crochets again your seven back loop half double crochets and yep yeah, this time you're doing it all the way around until of course you end here now along the side you will have your V's that you were working in as you were here but also this bit and again you're just going to have to try and find sensible locations to go in you've done a little bit of this ribbing now you know just about the distance that you should be bridging so again here as well look I have some stitches I can take into account so I will so one two slip stitch into there there we go and then slip stitch into the next one and off we go again. So anywhere you don't have the ready to use um, you know chains try and do your best um, and yeah I hope you will find it a nice repetitive and <laughs> <laughs> not too boring um, I've been watching a film I have to say <laughs> but it's been good because we are nearly there after this I will show you how to do the sleeve cuff and here we are we are ready to do our sleeve cuff now um, this sleeve is obviously wider than my arm so I still want to make the cuff go in even more so it really grips my wrist so what I'm going to do get started with a slip knot insert your hook and I'm just going to get started wherever really um, and I'm going to do three rounds of single crochets those single crochets will be um, reducing the amount of stitches I have so I've made up my own rule so let's get started with a standing single crochet and now I'm going to do one 
two, then one in here, three, four, and then stitch five and six I'm going to take together. So you go in, pull up a loop, go into the next one, pull up a loop and do it together. And then I continue. So one, two, three, four, and then five and six you take together. And this way you will reduce your stitches um, in one row. And then I'm going to do another two rounds and I'm going to keep on doing the same. So if I end up wherever I end up here, I'm just going to close my, you know, sort of do another stitch, close the round and then start counting again and doing my five and six together. Um, and doing this will reduce my stitches and will bring it closer to the, um, you know, the width of my arm. But of course, not completely, but that's fine because you do need a little bit of regal room for your hand to get in, okay? So let's do three rounds of this and I will be back to show you. So as you can see, I've reduced the opening by quite a few stitches, so it's a lot narrower, but I can still get my hand through just about, so that's okay. So now I'm going to start doing the ribbing that we have been doing. So we are going to chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, skip the first one, yarn over, back loop only for half double crochets, seven of them, and it's the same thing again. So after doing your seven half double crochets, skip one, slip stitch in the next one, go to the next one for your turning chain or slip stitch, and then you start doing your next row again of seven half double crochets. And here as well, of course, the last stitch is going to be under two strands. There we go. So you continue like this until you're all the way around. I have now made it all the way around and we are going to do that same zip lock, <laughs> zip lock <laughs> closure uh, that we have been doing. So in here, pull up a loop, then go over to, yeah, which one is it? The back loop there or pick up, you know, whatever you can pick up. If you wanted to pick up two here, like I have done just now, that's fine, obviously, because it's going to be, you know, the edge. So it, it it's allowed to be a little bit stronger. So make sure you keep your yarn sort of from coming from below into your cuff. So pull up your yarn and then do that flat zip um, closure. So I keep doing this. This isn't very easy or very, you know, but this is what we need to do because obviously um, this is the last little bit. There we go. So I'm going to keep going all the way down to my single crochets there. And this is what it looks like. So it will just blend in as another layer of your um, ribbing. <laughs> I'm at the end here and this is rather impossible. So let me just pull that through. Just try your best here to do that very last stitch. If you can't manage it, I would just cut off the yarn and use a darning needle just to do that last little bit. But you could also turn your sleeve inside out to do this. That would make it easier. This seems to have worked for now. Um, yeah, and I'm pulling it through. There we go. And I'm just going to cut off and then sew in the end from there. So I think that's okay to leave it like that. And of course, now that you've done this one, you're going to have to do your second one as well. Look at this. There we go. And this has now completed all the ribbing. 
So now it is time to sew in all your ends and to start wearing your cardigan. I have worn mine already so much. I have really enjoyed making this cardigan but also wearing it. It's one of those things that you make and you just put it on and you never take it off again. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you will make the cardigan and I hope you will enjoy making it just like I did. Thank you very much for being here, for supporting my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye!